Although the U.S. and Chile are on separate continents, they are amazingly similar. They are both democracies with a president that serves four years, a Senate, and a Congress. Their education systems are both free, compulsory, and are, are required for about the same amount of time. They are the second most illiterate of all South American countries, with a 95% literacy rate. Compared to the U.S.'s 97%, it's really good. Chile, like the U.S., has a stable economy. It is based on co mining, mostly copper. Being one of the most stable economies in South America, and because they have copper we need for electronics, some have suggested they join the North American Free Trade Agreement. NAFTA includes U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Both countries enjoy soccer, tennis, skiing, snowboarding, surfing, and basketball. Chile's national sport is rodeo. Chile has, a good stand, has good standings in the Olympics. They have two gold in tennis, seven silvers in athletics, equestrian boxing and tennis, and four bronze in tennis, boxing, and football. In the early 1500s, the Inca ruled from Colombia to central Chile and from the Pacific to the Amazon. Known as Tawan Tinsuya, or Land of Four Quarters, the empire fell after the emperor died and his son was killed by Spanish conquistadors. The conquistadors destroyed the Inca culture and replaced it with their own. For example, they replaced the Inca temples with Roman Catholic churches. In the 1800s, South America began to break away from Spain, and by 1818, Chile was free. In the 1970s, Chile was ruled by a military coup. In the late 1980s, Chile rejected the junta. Nowadays, Chile is a democracy. They have a president who serves four years, a commander-in-chief, a congress, a 38-seat senate who serves eight years, and a 120-member chamber of deputies who serve four years. Chile leads Latin America in human development, GDP per capita, competitiveness, quality of life, political stability, globalization, economic freedom, low perception of corruption, and comparatively low poverty rates. They also rank high in freedom of the press and democratic development. In Chile, they enjoy many of those freedoms that we have in America, but I don't think my life would be better. As for my education, Chile's education system is one of the best. On the first page, called Education Basica, I would be required to attend from age 6 to 14. Then, in the second phase, called Lyceos, the equivalent of our high school, you choose a set of courses based on what field you plan to go into in college. And from there, I'd go on to college. If I were to travel in Chile, I would probably go by road, but use a train or airplane for longer distances. I would spend my free time playing soccer or hanging out with my friends. My home would most likely be a modest house, but I'd be far from poor. Most likely, I would live with my parents and one or two siblings. My future is bright. I can only guess at what it's like to live in Chile, but one person who knows is native Chilean Gabriela Mistral. She was born on April 7, 1889 in Vicuna, Chile, and died in New York on January 10, 1957. She had many roles, some of which were poet, educator, diplomat, and feminist. Her most notable and interesting achievement was being the first Latin American to win the Nobel Prize in the Literature in 1945. People who live in Santiago, Chile are very lucky because they have the world's best climate. The climate of Chile ranges from desert to glaciers, with mountains, plains, and tropics in between. The small Montana town of Eureka has a highland climate, whereas Santiago, the capital of Chile, has a humid subtropical climate. Santiago and much of coastal Chile spend six months of the year under dense gray clouds. Therefore, Santiago is wetter and warmer than Eureka. The city is a lot bigger than Eureka, but like Eureka, it is surrounded by lots of open space. The space is mostly used for farming grapes to make into wine. This affects the people because not only just Chileans, but rich and poor tourists alike, can take the equivalent of seven vacations with one visa. When you travel to Chile, there are many places to go. A popular travel spot is Pejo Lake, which leads to the Salto Grande waterfall in southern Chile. In the far north is the Atacama Desert, which is considered the driest place on Earth. The polar opposite is Laguna Rafael National Park and Alberto Agostini National Park on Chile's southern tip. They both contain amazing ice fields, glaciers, and deep fjords. But don't go thinking Chile is a landlocked freezer. Chile has many islands, some of which are part of the Chiloé Archipelago and the famous Easter Island. Not only does Chile have natural wonders, but there's man-made ones too. There's the R.P. Gustavo LePage Archaeological Museum with 380,000 pre-Columbian artifacts. Speaking of old things, if you like Yellowstone, you'll like the Grandfather Geyser Field. El Teixo, which means Grandfather Geyser, is the third largest geyser field in the world. 
Because of all these travel spots, the people are supported and influenced by tourists. And because most of their borders are the Andes Mountains, the Pacific Ocean, and the Atacama Desert, Chile doesn't get involved in too many wars. As you can see, a lot of Chile's economy is based in central Chile. The ocean provides seafood for export, and it's a major food product for the natives. All that open space is great for farming different grains. Especially around Santiago, grapes are a major product. In fact, Chile is one of the largest explorers of wine in the world. Some traditional foods are humitas, or pureed corn and corn husks, and pastel de cocolo, or corn and meat.